Living out of five-star hotels or stately country homes. So this is my garden, soccer pitches. Cruising around the city in supercars. On the hunt for the most expensive designer gear. This would be thousand pounds. 32 and a half thousand pounds, literally just here. The mega moneyed life of the rich kid is beyond unreal. My most expensive holiday was over 10,000 pounds. They have no concept of what life is like for most Brits. I've got a cleaner, I've got a chef, people wash my clothes for me, people cook for me. I think I've been on a bus once. So in this series, they will be plucked from their pampered lives. Literally like an abandoned area. I wouldn't feel safe walking around here actually by myself at night. To live with families Hi. Hello. Hi. who struggle to survive. People that are comfortable living on benefits are lazy. I didn't have a meal because I only had enough to feed the kids. Yeah, don't cry. Only by living with those on the opposite side of the wealth gap. If there was rats everywhere, maybe I'd be a little bit put off. <laughs> can they appreciate the real value of money? So at the end of the month, how much normally are you left with? Uh, nothing. I've really realised how tough it actually is. When rich kids go skint. Today's rich kid going skint is 21-year-old university graduate Patrick, the son of a wealthy property tycoon. Yeah, my dad's been supportive of me my whole life. He's paid for me to go to private school. He's paid for me to have a nice house at university. He's taken me on nice holidays during my breaks. Home for Patrick is his parents' rather palatial seven-bed mansion in Hertfordshire. This is the hallway, pretty much where just guests come in and we greet guests. The main chilling is done in here, in the lounge. So this is my garden, really. We've just got some soccer pitches, and then I've got my tree house over there, which was built for me when I was much younger. Now he's all grown up, Patrick's been given his very own apartment at the top of the house. This is my area, really. Just got a kind of lounge living area where I have hang out with my friends, have some pre-drink for a night out. Growing up in such opulence means rich kid Patrick's never had to lose sleep over money. I love my clothes and fashion, shoes, and I love cars and watches. They're my main things that I like to collect. As you do. This is a, a two-tone Rolex Submariner, which I actually got stolen from me, but I just bought another one. Rich kid Patrick's also a passionate collector of designer clothes. I have a lot of shoes. So these are probably my favourite pair of trainers. I bought them for about a thousand pounds. So this is probably my most extravagant piece of clothing that I've bought. Um, I saw Kanye West had it, so I bought it because he had it. So this would be a thousand pounds. So overall, it would be tens of thousands of pounds. Blimey. But his wardrobe isn't the only thing racking up his dad's credit card bill. My most expensive possession would be my Mercedes car. My favourite feature on it is obviously it's the colour of it, satin black. That's what makes it so stand out ish. It's quite posy, I guess. Yes, it is. Ever thought of using public transport? I think I've been on a bus uh, once. And when his car can't get in places, he just hops on a plane. I go on holiday, I don't know, five, five times a year probably. I'm fortunate enough to have a place in the south of France. Once he's done sipping champagne on his holidays, Patrick hopes to one day join the family business. But his parents reckon he first needs a hard dose of reality by spending time with an underprivileged family. I have kind of lived in a bubble where I've just not really worried about you know, paying bills, paying mortgages, paying for food on the table. It could be wise for me to see how they, how they do it and how they maybe cut their costs. Maybe I could learn to cut some mine from them. Hopefully I'll learn a lot. But being forced to live completely skint leaves our rich kid with some serious fears. I'm used to quite a lot of space and not feeling too claustrophobic. I eat quite a lot. I need to eat quite a few thousand calories a day, which I don't know if they could provide. My mum's given me some food. <laughs> That's just what mums do, isn't it? Bursting Patrick's big bubble of privilege clearly won't be easy. But the person hoping to do just that is a single mum of one from Salford in Manchester, who faces a daily grind getting by on benefits. I'm Katrina, I'm 30 and from Salford. Jackson is two and I'd say I'm a good mum. Oh, look at all the animals. Being a single mum, it's hard at times. Oh. Each week we get £140 and that's 
to cover everything. Sometimes I have to think which bills need to go before other bills and some weeks I don't pay some to be able to do things with Jackson. I try obviously to cook proper food but it's not always the case so I'll go to frozen food. Say like it serves four, I'd probably get about eight servings from it. Living on a budget can be quite um, stressful. I want to give Jackson nice things and I'm not always able to do that. If I'm in the shop and Jackson asks for a, a toy or a magazine, most of the time I've not got the funds to be able to do that. I feel guilty like I'm not good enough because I can't give him them things. Oh, Jackson, are you going to come get your coat on to go park? Come on then, buddy. The last time I went on holiday was well over 10 years ago. Are you ready? Me and Jackson, we try and do most things that are free. The park's quite good because it's it's really big and it's not far. <gasps> One, two, three, woo! I'd hope that I could teach them like what real life is like because real life isn't spending ridiculous amounts of money on champagne and nice fast cars, fancy watches. Real life is going work, staying at home, looking after the kids. Living skimp with Katrina will be a hard kick outside his comfort zone for pampered Patrick. Before he sets off to experience what life is like on the breadline, he's breaking the news to his best mate, Josh. How are you? Hey. You good? Hey. How are you? Good, man. I haven't seen you in like a day. I know, we got back, long. got back yesterday from Cannes. So yeah. you have something to tell me, Brandon? I do. I'm going away. Okay. I'm going to be staying with a family who's living on the breadline. So they have like nothing. Nothing. I don't what? know even if they have enough food on the table for everyone. So I'm going to. Do what? That. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Living on the breadline? Living you. on the breadline. You on the breadline? Me on the breadline. Oh yeah. God. I'll survive. You must be nervous. I'm worried about how much, how much food they'll give me because I don't want to just be starving. Will you be helping them out in the house? I don't know, I guess. Doing the washing? I don't know if I'll do the washing. I don't think you've ever done the washing. I, no, I haven't done washing, but I could, I'll could. i do the dishes. When they're asking him to wash the dishes, clean the clothes, clean the house, I mean, normally his mum does it all for him. They're not going to have a lot of money, so you can't cook your fillet steak, your potato dauphinois. <laughs> and then for dessert, moyo chocolat. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Some pasta. Nice pasta, bolognese, I guess. You think I'll struggle? I think you'll struggle. I think I'll be fine. I know, I know for sure he'll hate it. Deep down, he's going to be screaming inside. That will be an amazing experience, honestly. I think so. It'll be eye-opening for you to see the other, how the other half live. Yeah. Uh, you'll learn a lot. That's one of the main things I think it would do. Yeah. And just make me realise like, more value of money and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You'll realise how lucky you are. Yeah. Anyway, mate, I'm proud right. of you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Good you. luck. <laughs> At the moment, to be honest, he's a bit of a mummy's boy, but I think this experience will teach him a lot and he'll become a lot more uh, self-sufficient and independent. I hope he makes that alive. Only time will tell. The big day's arrived. Time for Patrick to bid goodbye to his dad's credit card and head north to Salford and the complete unknown. The nerves are building and building. I have no idea what they can, how they'll react to me or how I'll react to them. As Patrick reluctantly leaves his life of privilege, Katrina's unsure about having a rich kid in her humble home. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Obviously, my house is going to be a lot different to theirs. I like my home and I've tried to make it as nice as I can. So hopefully <laughs> they're not like a judgy person. I've never heard of, of Salford before in this area. <laughs> and I wouldn't feel safe walking around here actually by myself at night. Where I live is very like, there's a lot of greenery, a lot of space, larger houses. Um, and here it's very cramped. And all the houses are kind of on top of each other. I didn't think it would be like this. I hope I get a bed. If I don't get sleep, I get grumpy. And then it's all a downward spiral from then. Hi. 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 Hi, nice. Hi I'm Kat. Hi, I'm Patrick. Nice Patrick. to meet you. I'm 
this is Jackson. Hi, Jackson. Are you coming in? So this is the living room. This is where okay. we spend most of the time. We'll have our meals in here. You don't, do you not have a, you don't have a table to eat no, your dinners no. at? So what's your house like? Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit different. It is quite a bit bigger yeah. than here, to yeah. be honest. So this is my room, so I, I think it's really big. Yeah, no, it is. That um, is a good size. So how many bedrooms has um, your house got? Um, there's... <laughs> you have to count. <laughs> I think there's a way. <laughs> there's one. I think it's six. Six. Six right, bedrooms, okay, yeah. Okay. Right, and how many people so, live there? Just me and my mum. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So this is Jackson's room. A lot smaller than the other room. And he only really sleeps in here. We play downstairs. Um, so it's it's perfect. So it's perfect for him. So this is the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, my my kitchen's a lot bigger than this. Yeah, if you're like cooking, it could get a bit tricky, couldn't it? Yeah, sometimes um, you like whack the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Place. That's what I was yeah. thinking. What foods do you cook? I tend to use a lot of frozen food um, because yeah, it's, cheap it's cheaper and okay. it goes a long way. Um, but I do try about two or three times a week. I'd try and make lasagna, sweet bolognese. What sort Perfect. of foods would you? My mum cooks me a lot of salmon and uh, steaks as well. I love my mum's cooking, so she cooks for me three meals a day. Three yeah. meals a day? Yeah. Well, Mum's not here now, and neither are any of your home comforts. OK, so this is um, where you'll is, be staying. This is my bed. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. this is your bed. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. I'm just going to go see what Jackson's <laughs> yeah, doing. Sure right. <laughs> OK. So how does Patrick feel about slumming it in a housing association property? I, I knew that if they exist, I can kind of picture what it would be like. So, but it's not what I've ever really experienced before. I think the biggest shock is the kitchen. Like, it's very small and very, it's not very tidy. There's a lot of cutlery just everywhere and like food still on the side. Does she have a dishwasher? There's no room for one. It's all a bit of a come down for the rich kid. I never slept on a couch. Even after parties and stuff, I would always get a taxi home. It'd have to make do because there's nowhere else for him to stay. <laughs> so, and it's not in my bed. We'll see how he gets on with some of the air uh, cleaning and maybe even get him to cook. <laughs> he said his mum cooks him like three meals a day, so he definitely <laughs> won't get that here. There's very little of Patrick's grand home life on offer here, but he's brought a taste of his luxurious lifestyle for Katrina to sample. Got you a little something. It's a um, it's a rosé champagne. Oh. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I, I, I'm looking forward to trying yeah. it. Maybe. Um, when do you think you'll open someone's it? Someone's birthday. Someone's birthday. Someone's birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's always a good thing, I think, to yeah, whip out a birthday party. Yeah. Look what I got. <laughs> Being used to champagne and fine dining on Daddy's money, living skint is going to be a big adjustment. I don't really know how much I'd spend that much, but if you're going out for a nice dinner or something and drinks, which you look at like a few, a few hundred pounds for a meal like that, mm -hmm. um, a cocktail can even be 25, 30 pounds. Wow, really? Yeah, so... Wow, what are they putting in so, it? So, <laughs> Everything. Gold, probably. Everything. Uh, <laughs> The clubbing costs you quite a few hundred as well for just yeah. one night. So would you have to budget in any tents? Um, not, not really. If I go to the supermarket, I wouldn't really watch what I spend. Yeah. I just choose what I what I want. Yeah. Really. Lucky for some. There may be no penny pinching for Patrick, but for Katrina, her money barely stretches far enough to put food on the table. So how much do you think you spend like a week on on food? Um. Average about thirty pounds. About thirty pounds. Yeah. You told me you weren't working, so I presume that you're getting it from, yeah. from the government. Um, so how does that work? I don't really. So one hundred and forty a week we get. Um, a week. Okay. A week. Yep. Yeah. And that's for bills, food, um, clothes, all the essentials. So at the end of the month, how much normally are you left with? Uh, nothing. Literally nothing. No, no um, pounds. That's no. Hearing about Katrina's financial worries is already a big reality check for the rich kid. So, do you know many people in my situation? No, not, not really. Mm -hmm. So, what would your thoughts experience. have been on a family on benefits? On having been here and seen how how full on it really is, yeah. there's, literally, <laughs> there's no way you could do anything else. This like big stigma of yeah, I know what you mean. of um, people on benefits, and I 
hate the fact that sometimes I feel I have to explain myself. Yeah, in your situation, there's nothing, nothing more you could do, mm -hmm. really. Patrick can splash out on lavish lunches and classy cocktails. But Katrina's forced to plan every meal to make ends meet. So what kind of foods do you normally like to cook? Tinned veg, which is cheaper than yeah. fresh veg. Um, and then when there's not much in, I will make frozen stuff like chips, fish, fish fingers. fingers, potato slices, just things that um, go a long way. Yeah. These are quite good, um, where you get a bit of everything in it. So you've got £30 for all your shops. So you have to be quite smart with... Yeah, so that's, like, why there's mostly frozen stuff. Yeah. Because it keeps... You get quite a bit for your money and you can take out what, what you need yeah, without it going really, off. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. The big difference, I would say, from my, from my kitchen at home is that there's less in the freezer. Right. So, like, so there'd be, like, chicken around. breast and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's kind so of it's all different fresh. No sign of any fancy fresh food here. And Patrick's huge appetite is about to take a hit food will probably go a longer way than maybe what your portions yeah. are used to. You, you may look at the portion yeah. and think, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Why have you given me Jackson's food? A low-priced lunch is definitely going to take some getting used to. But it's a chance for Katrina to hear all about his privileged upbringing. Here you go. Jackson. My upbringing childhood wasn't tough really mm -hmm. just went to school mm -hmm. and then to university mm -hmm. and i'm gonna start working that's the plan yeah and then move into like the real world yeah really, because i've kind of been in a bubble <laughs> yeah i don't really have much worries <laughs> so it's it good to pop kind of, in yeah it needs to pop posh private schools are a far cry from katrina's difficult upbringing in foster care so did you find it difficult growing up with a foster family? It was hard when I was younger because I was always from birth in and out of foster families, temporary ones oh, sometimes. Oh, so different ones? Yeah. Before year 10, the longest I'd ever been in a, a school was six months. Really? 16. Oh. About 16, 16 schools? Yeah, probably more, to be fair. Yeah, so it was quite difficult moving about and that. So you must have missed months of school? Yes. In year 8, I didn't go to school any of year eight. So you didn't have year eight? No, so that's like completely gone. I only learned to read um, when I was around 18, 21. Did you teach yourself to read at like 18? Um, I'll speak to you about that okay. later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on then, buddy. Let's go. When you're a rich kid like Patrick, packing your bags for foreign shores comes as second nature. There we go. Unlike Katrina, who's barely made it past her postcode. Where are we? <laughs> How many um, holidays a year would you say you take? Um, I go back and forth to France quite a lot. So yeah. I've, been, I've been three times a summer. I'm going on Monday again. Yeah. So maybe. S six holidays six, a year? About six a year. Six a year, probably, yeah. yeah. So when was the last time you left Manchester? I can't, I can't remember. Good, good few years ago. When you're restricted to things, um, you sometimes don't have a choice. I think, like, six holidays a year. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well. It sounds like we should, we should split it and go on three each. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that'd, that'd be sound, nice. That'd be nicer, wouldn't it? More yeah. fair, I guess. I could name anyone who hasn't left the country, let alone the town, for, for years. I, mean, I think that's, that's crazy. I, I've, ne I, I've never heard of that. It's interesting just how different his lifestyle is. To me, it's normal, but I guess to him, it's, it's not very normal. So, but then again, I don't think going on holidays six times a year is normal. That's because it's not, and it seems that fact's fast dawning on the rich kid. From seeing her life now, I can see why she hasn't, because it, it's little costs that you like. To most people, you wouldn't think is very much, but to her, obviously, that it's, every little bit makes such a big difference. Even though I've only been here a short period of time, I've really realised how tough it actually is for some people. Having already learned so much about life with little money, Patrick's keen to update his best mate, Josh. 
Yes. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Where are you? The airport. About to fly to Sri Lanka and then to Maldives. What class Tomorrow. are you going? First. First class. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, that looks so nice. Do you want to see my my outlet yeah. a bit? So different. It's, it's not as nice as where you are. So it's a single mother. She's 30 years old. She's got a kid. They have like no money. Like really? they live. They live on like 500 pounds a month. What's the house like? It's small. It's really small. And the food they cook is so like different. Like so for obviously you know we normally eat loads. For lunch I had two. You know those mini kia balls. You know the yeah. tiny kia balls. I had two. And like a few um, of these like chip things. But you could eat it, at least. I, yeah, it wasn't like horrible. No, it was just like oven frozen food. She spends like 30 pounds a week for her and her kids. 30 pounds? A week. Oh. We're like, that's like your beef carpaccio starter. <laughs> Where are you sleeping tonight? I'm sleeping on a couch. They, their living room is also their like dining room. So they don't have a table. What, they sit, they sit on the sofa? They sit on the sofa the and eat the food of their knees, yeah, on their knees, yeah. For her, they're like fun. They'll go and just walk in the park every yeah. day, twice so a day, even if it's pouring rain. My flight's here in like 20 minutes, so I've got to go now. Okay. See you later. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. Speaking to Josh, it make, makes me quite jealous how obviously he's about to go on his first class flight to the Maldives. And I'm far from that right now. But um, he's, not having a good, he's not having the experience. He's still in the bubble. I'm moving out of the bubble, so <laughs> I guess that's why I'm going to go further in that, in that respect. <laughs> Show the way. Katrina wants Patrick to understand that when you're completely skint, family treats are few and far between. Yeah, thank you. Hi guys. Hi, um, two adults and a child, please. How old is your child? Two. Come on. She's brought son Jackson to a local trampoline park. <laughs> Something she spent a long time saving up for. <laughs> so this doesn't happen that very often because. Um, everything just amounts up. It's not just getting in. It's yeah. the, the the getting here. And yeah. Getting food and stuff. Do you have to sacrifice money in other areas to make this possible? I just refrain from paying something paying and then some. just catch up on it um, later down the line. Yeah, yeah. I find it crazy how um, she does it once every few months and it's like twenty pounds. I'd spend twenty pounds on like a haircut every like ten days, which it just makes it put, you put it into perspective and it's just. The money could be of so much better use than me having like a four millimeter shorter on my hair. How important do you think it is, like money? I, mean, I think it's nice to be comfortable. Yeah. But to have too much has brings us its own problems. I've been mugged and beaten up. Four people jumped, jumped me and stole one of my watches. You know, to not worry about having food on the table is good. Yeah, but then also, yeah. if you have too much, that just. It's different, prob it's different problems, I think, yeah. So it yeah. doesn't bring, okay. it's not So you always, said uh, one of your watches, so how many watches do you have? I have three, four, three at the moment. I have two watches, but my watches cost about three pound. Mine, like, mine are more, a bit more than that. Yeah. Overall, it would be, be tens of thousands. A bit? If I won the lottery, I don't think I'd even spend that money, even then. Just because I, I kind of like, I, I value it a bit more than wearing it on your wrist. When there's so much more things you could do. Definitely a different world. If Patrick's mother's not rustling him up a tasty dinner, he's out splashing the cash at swanky restaurants. Uh, Patrick? Do you want to give us a hand with the food? Yeah, sure. Yep. But the rich kid's fast realising that there are no such luxuries for people like Katrina. Have you ever had frozen risotto? Uh, I don't think so. No. I don't think I have, but okay. it smells good and I'm hungry. Yeah. Which is also a plus. I just hope this is um, going to be uh, enough to... Well, no. <laughs> It'll be fine. Will Patrick's discerning palate struggle with this? It's nice, thank you very much. Mm. No worries. Living Skint's giving him a new perspective on what life would be like without his parents' money. I think it's definitely opened up my eyes 
before I would have, you know, not thought deeply into actually, you know, not everyone's fortunate as me, not everyone has had the lucky upbringing that I have. Mm -hmm. I don't really think much before. Yeah. So so already that's, that's good. Really yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would think about more because mm -hmm. just by talking to you a bit, it's completely changed that's that. That's good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. Growing up in a tough Manchester neighbourhood, Katrina's childhood was a world away from public schools and private jets. To show Patrick just how different their upbringings have been, she has a shock in store. There's somewhere that I want to take you after, and it's somewhere that I'm quite embarrassed about, but it's somewhere that I'm not ashamed of, because um, it's, it's, it, it was me at one point. This is part that I was worried about you maybe judging me on. You'll find out. We'll find out in a bit. Yeah. Kitchen for you. But before that, there's the washing up to do. I never do the washing up, really. So, but we have a dishwasher. She... I don't think she has... I don't think she has a dishwasher. So, that's a bit unlucky. But, um... It's not complicated, is it? Well, you're about to show us. He's not used to getting his hands dirty. Am I doing it right? It's fine, yeah? But washing up does give Patrick time to contemplate where it could be that Katrina wants to take him tonight. I think maybe a strip club. Because how she's saying, like, it's not something I'm proud of. You know, that could be, like, stripping past. I could see why she did to make money. So I don't know, what she, but that's what I'd expect. But then I, I think I could be completely wrong. I'm, I'm, that's a guess. Dish is done, he's about to find out where Katrina wants to take him. Where we're going is part of my past. It's been about nine years since I've last been here. Um, in a sense, I, I like that it's behind me, but I also yeah. like to remind myself about my experience at this place. Do you look back at this place with good memories? Not good memories at all. Was it prison? Was it prison? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been to prison? Yep. Yeah, no, that's really not what I um, expected, to be honest. That's a shock. Katrina's brought Patrick to Style Prison in Cheshire, where she served a jail sentence, a part of her life she deeply regrets. When I got out, I was um, roughly your age. So you're in here when you were the same age as me? Yeah. How long were you in here for? Um, just under two and a half years. And it was horrible, I'm guessing. It was quite scary. Thinking, like, how much of my life I wasted in there, I could have used that time for something else. Much more productive, yeah. Yeah, definitely, but at the time, I wasn't thinking that. By meeting you, I'd never thought you'd have been here. That's nice that you think that, Not, yeah. Cause... Maybe it shows how much you've... Yeah. Maybe changed? I think if, yeah, a couple of years ago, you probably wouldn't have, really? wouldn't have yeah. thought that, yeah. So I guess it's all in the past now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just don't definitely. really want to think about it and kind of put it... Mm -hmm. it, was, it was when you were young, so it doesn't Yeah, really... young and stupid and thought everyone's, I knew it all. Everyone's young and stupid sometimes. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes. And I yeah. think I've learned a little bit from it. I actually learned myself to read in here. Learned um, to read? Yeah. In, in I, here. Yeah, all I had was time. And over nearly three years, You just I taught yourself? I learned how wow. to, yeah. Katrina's shocking revelation tonight has brought home to Patrick what a fortunate childhood he's had. And obviously, maybe if I didn't come from, you know, a privileged background, then I could easily end up here. You know, I think maybe yeah. I've just got lucky. Mm. And then, because I could so understand how, if you essentially have nothing, you can easily get involved in doing something like this, because it's, as it's yeah. quick, easy money. So I, I, probably, I probably would end up doing some things that I regret. I never thought it would be that she'd been in prison for, what, nearly three years. Wow, like, that's, that really, that really got me. I can't imagine going there when I was her age, not really knowing where your life's gonna go and not really having much to look back, look back on and to, to look forward to. She's had a really tough time. Hopefully from today, he's, he's, his mind's changed from what he would have perceived as someone on benefits 
um, it's not it's not easy being a stay-at-home mum and not working. It's always non-stop on the go. In some circumstances, people can judge too quick. Leaving behind his luxuries and parents' comfy country mansion has been a shock for Patrick. So as his second day living skint with Katrina begins, how's he coped slumming it on her sofa? Last night I probably slept about three hours, compared to I normally sleep nine. Jackson woke up screaming a few times in the night, and then the dog was running around. <laughs> I don't think I will rush back to the sofa if I had the choice. No such thing as a lion when you have a house and toddler to look after. Here you go, pudding, there's yours. And there's your spoon. Because Patrick's never had to budget, Katrina's given him the ultimate challenge. Today we're going to um, go to the supermarket and you're going to have £30 to spend on what you think would last a week for me and Jackson. For both of you. So 28 yeah. meals. Thirty pounds, so mm -hmm. just over a pound a meal. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do Be it. Be interesting. Yeah, I'll we'll give it one. Yeah. Best shot. Thirty pounds for a week's groceries is a big ask for the rich kid. So can he rise to the challenge and show he could survive in the real world? Any tips? Try not to go over, because if you go over, you'll have to put things back, and it's it's a bit it's embarrassing. embarrassing. Okay. Yeah. £30, pounds, obviously their weekly budget is... That's what I'd spend on one meal in a nice restaurant. I feel a lot of pressure doing this, yeah. A lot. I really don't want to let her down. Right from the off, Patrick's showing some encouraging signs. I'm thinking probably to get some produced stuff and maybe I want a big... a big sack of pasta. I think that'd be... I think that'd be a good idea. Katrina, however, has her doubts. I personally think he's not going to um, he's not going to do very well, um, especially if he only does like shopping for like one day. Onto a bargain shelf. That's three pounds. Is there more mints? Change his mind. Put it down. <laughs> What's the cheapest mints you have? The cheapest mints? Yeah. Looks like he's asking for help. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I think he will get good things, but I don't think it'll last quite a week. That'll do them a good few meals, and it's only £1.49, so I think that's a good start. Three kilograms of pasta for £3.280, so that's definitely a good idea. Good thinking. But just when it looks like he's getting the hang of things... So maybe some parma ham to mix up with the bolognese to make it a bit more tasty. I couldn't even think what you'd do with it. It's like a posh meat, that, isn't it? So since being here, I've noticed that she likes quite a lot of frozen food. And as it's, it looks cheaper, that's 80... So that's 85p, which is perfect for a few meals. Maybe a pack of frozen peas. It'll be interesting to see what cereal they get. So this is like a cookie crisp, just a cheaper version, so I think Jackson will really like that, and that will last him for quite a long time. Jackson's very fussy with his breakfast. After bagging a final few bargains... He made carbonara sauce. Twelve chipolata sausages. Time to head to the till to see if he's managed to keep within Katrina's all-important £30 budget. £29.68. Thank you. Oh, well done, you. I think it went pretty well. I'm surprised um, at how much you can actually get for £30. I think it will last them for the week, for sure. All done. Great. How do you think I you th did? I think it's good. I think I've done well. Yeah. I hope you think the same. He's pretty sure of himself, but the jury's still out on that one. Time to see if what he's bought is enough to provide 28 meals for the household. So, do you want to see what I've chose? Yeah. For the week. So I got a thin and crispy cheese tomato pizza. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's I feel fine. Like that's a couple yeah, meals. Yeah. Just some veg. 
So quite yeah, a lot perfect. of garden peas. Perfect, yeah. I got some frozen chicken bit. Yeah, I know that's, that's good. So I thought that'd be quite nice. Yeah. Um, some carbonara sauce. That's good, yeah. Because you can't, can't, can't go, go wrong. wrong with that. Bolognese sauce. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good because it's not um, yeah. it's not a really expensive one as no, well. No, it's quite so it's quite it's a cheap one. Patrick's obviously given some serious thought to his food shop. Obviously, I know you like pasta, so I got loads of pasta. Right. Okay. Yeah, see, that's good. That's really good, and it's a big bulk as get. well, so it works out cheaper. I got some Parma ham. <laughs> okay. Good luck selling that one to her. I wouldn't even know what to do with that. Really? Yeah. Luckily for you. I know what to do with it, so you have to wait and see. Before you start getting too confident, what does Katrina reckon? That's brilliant for me and Jackson, but these three. The dog? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, I didn't think of the dog. Patrick did really well. There was a few things that I would have changed. Palm ham. <laughs> That's, we'll, we'll see. Poor Rocco's got no food, but um, yeah, he did, he did good. The dog may have no dinner this week, but there are often times when Katrina can't afford to feed herself and her son. So what is this place? It's similar to a food bank, but you're paying a little bit towards, so and you're you putting a bit of a contribution, yeah. At the time. OK. Katrina wants to show Patrick that when times are so tight, there is a last resort. If he was to take something away from this, like if he was to not throw things away, maybe spend so a bit little, that that would be brilliant. Probably see. pick the chicken. That will do, like, two days. Quite a few meals. This social supermarket is specifically for families on benefits or low incomes. And then there's more stuff around here. Hot dogs. Are Members pay £2.50 a week and are able to choose items to the value of around £15. Pasta sauce, that looks interesting. What we've got here, I guess, is like probably like five, six meals. Yeah. It's like kind of another food shop. A yeah, week. yeah. I've never been somewhere like uh, that before and I didn't know they existed. Obviously, it makes such a big difference to Kat and like her family. It's given me a lot to think about just being here for you know, half an hour. I think that's definitely been an eye-opener for me. Buoyed by his success with the shopping challenge, Patrick's keen to update best mate Josh on what he's learnt so far. How are you? How's the Maldives? Sunny. Sunny for like the next week. Oh, perfect. Show me what you're looking at. This is my room. Have you got your own place? Is that your pool? Nice. This is the pool, and then just behind the pool is the sea. Oh, so nice. Last night, yeah, I went. She took me somewhere, and it was. I went to a prison. It was really quite scary. And then today, we got kind of done like a food shop. I had to buy, buy like a, a week's food for thirty pounds. Yeah. Everything you need, thirty pounds. Have you learned anything from this experience? Yeah, I think I have actually learned quite a lot because, like, you know, you know when I used to throw food away because it'd be like nearly out of date or something. You can actually like give it to some of these like shelters. I think I've just understand more of like how the real world is. When I get back, I'll, just, I'll show you the ways. All right, have fun. All right. Enjoy. You enjoy yourself. Don't have too much back. fun. All right, bye bye. Yeah. With his experience living skint almost over, Patrick's going all out to leave a good impression. I'm not the best cook, but I have my special dishes, which she's going to see tonight. Eager to prove he could feed a family if he had to, and knowing what a rare treat it is for Katrina, he's offered to try his hand at a farewell dinner. And she's cooked for me for my time here, so it's nice for me to uh, give something back to her. And he's banking on that rather expensive ingredient he bought earlier to add something special to his supper. I have confidence in the parma ham. When you put it in a bolognese, it really does make a big difference. Smells really good. Can't wait. I'm pretty pleased with it, actually. How it's come out, it looks pretty good. Well, as they say, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Perfect. It's a rare occasion for Katrina and Jackson to sit down to a meal cooked by somebody else. Thank you. Looks good. Hopefully it tastes good. Yeah. So when was the last time someone cooked for you? I think my birthday, my 30th. That was the last time? Mm-hmm. So what's the verdict on the rich kids' cooking skills? Yeah, it's nice. Like it? It's nice. Yeah. Thank you very much. What do you think of the Parma ham? It's nice. Would you get it again? If I 
if it was Probably in the reduced not. aisle. In the reduced <laughs> aisle. <Yeah. laughs> Seeing how Katrina regularly has to rely on discounted foods has given Patrick a whole new perspective on his own extravagant spending habits. The biggest thing I've come out of from this experience would be the value of money. I feel like I've been trapped in a bubble like quite a lot of my life and quite protected from from the real world. And I'm about to go out into it now having finished university and all get a real get a real job and it just get a big eye opener really. So do you think you've learned anything from the from the whole experience? Definitely. And just not to um judge somebody through the background. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, I think I've definitely learned that as well. Yeah. I've probably learned more though because I've seen I've got real insight into your life mm -hmm. and everything, so I've learned a lot. That's say. that's good. That's good. Living skint with Katrina has been a hard dose of reality for this rich kid. It's shown him just how tough life could be without his parents' financial support. And as he heads home, he has a new appreciation for the hardships people like her face. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's been thank lovely. You. As a gesture for all she's taught him, Patrick has something from the trampoline park. I picked up five um, free passes for both of you. Oh, thank so you. So I thought that's that's oh, more useful, more so fun much. than it's a day out yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Bottles. That's so, really well, nice. That. Thank you so much. Something that's useful. So, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, there you go. Thanks. Well, thanks again. Oh, thank hopefully you. I'll see you soon. Have a safe journey. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye. The thing that surprised me most my whole time with Katrina and her family, I think, is how hard how hard it really is. For the last few days, I feel like I've really got out of the bubble that I've been in and really been put, you know, in the deep end. And I've learned so much from doing that and I think that's one of the biggest shocks, just how hard it actually is to, uh, for some people to get by. <laughs>